Okay, so here we are back in Dreamweaver. Now also, since you guys are new to this whole concept and everything, I'm gonna try as best as possible to make these little uh, videos short and sweet and to the point. I'm gonna try to keep it under five minutes, but we'll see what happens. Now, whoever created this web page didn't title their document. Well, geez, that's not good. Well, how do we do that? Well, we simply click right here. Now, what I would typically do is this. I would start out the home page by putting in the name of the site, which is simply mycat.com. Now I'm going to follow that with maybe some information. You know, maybe we sell wholesale cat supplies. So I'm going to put that in there. Wholesale, wholesale, if I can learn how to spell, cat supplies. Uh, and also maybe we do free shipping. So I'm going to put that in there too. Free shipping. So that simply went into the title of my page. That is not the name of the file. That's the title of the page. Now I can keep building from here and up to 128 characters. I can put anything that is pertinent to helping people find my site. Okay, maybe I have allergy free products for cat, for cat lovers or dog lovers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So whatever you put in there is gonna come up in the title. Now, before we start building this page, I just want to share a couple of things with you. What Dreamweaver does, Dreamweaver is a WYSIWYG program. If you haven't heard that concept before, that means what you see is what you get. WYSIWYG. Google it. <laughs> okay, so what does Dreamweaver basically do? Well, Dreamweaver is an HTML, CSS editor. It edits a lot more code than that too. It edits JavaScript, it edits PHP, it edits WordPress sites, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, I have courses on that in great detail on udemy.com. And again, if you haven't checked out some of my free examples, I would suggest going to udemy.com forward slash think, learn, earn for how to use Udemy the right way and also have some great techniques on Photoshop and more advanced techniques with Dreamweaver. Okay, now again, what Dreamweaver does and all Dreamweaver does is write code. Everything I did in this file, when I put this in here, it put that code into the back end of the page. So here is how Dreamweaver thinks so far. Right now I have a couple different visual modes. I have my design mode which basically enables you to write the code in a very simple point and click way and it will write the code in the background. However, you can go to code and physically type into here too. So back in the day, I just want to share with you, circa 1993, 94, 95, before they even had programs like, forget Dreamweaver, before they had PageMill or FrontPage or any other program that basically became a point and click uh, WYSIWYG editor you had to learn how to write this stuff from scratch. So what I've just done here by filling in the title of the page, it put it inside the title tag, the title tag. This is known as a tag. This is an opening tag. This is a closing tag. Notice the difference here. Okay, now to make this a little bit more enjoyable, I'm gonna increase the size of my type here. You know, for you, for you old, older than 30 crowd, like I'll be 54 in May, and I just started wearing glasses for the very first time in the past six months. And it's no fun, believe me. So what I'm going to do is go to my preferences, and happens to be on Windows is Control U, Macintosh, it's Command U. Now, here is my preferences. All software programs have some kind of preferences. It's the way that you prefer to work. So this is really that simple. So as an example, I have new document preferences, invisible character preferences, which I will talk to you in great detail in a subsequent video. But what we're concerned about right now is I want to basically see, so if I click here as an example, here's my general preferences, opening my document at startup. I will talk about this in, in much more detail. But what I want to pay attention right now is fonts. So what I want to have happen right now in code views, I want to change my code view based on these choices. I want to change my code view font. Right now it's set to nine points. So for demonstration purposes, or when you get home, perhaps you want to do this yourself, we're going to change this to 16 points. Now, if you want to take a note on this, there's a little side issue here. And again, you can do this on Udemy, the top right-hand corner. There are 72 points or 72 pixels 
they're sort of the same thing. This should really be saying pixels because I'm on a website, not a desktop publishing program. But in this particular case, points and pixels are sort of the same unit of measurement. But here's how it works. Take a note on this if you're not sure because we're going to use this later. And there might actually be a quiz, a pop-up quiz. Okay, there's 72 pixels to an inch. 72 pixels equals one inch. Which means, of course, unless you slept through fourth grade math class, which I hope you didn't, there's 72 pixels to an inch, so a half inch would be 36 pixels. Makes sense, right? Half of that would be 18 pixels, which hence would be a quarter inch. So 18 pixels is basically a quarter inch high. So this gives you a visual reference on how big a pixel is. So we're going to change my default code view. It's okay that we pick with this typeface. That's fine. That'll work for me. But I'm just going to change that to 16 pixels. So if I hit OK, that, whoa, that gets a lot bigger. So this way it's going to be much more enjoyable for you as a novice to actually see my code and what's happening behind the scenes. Now I've decided to actually go just one step smaller than that. So let's just go to 14 and I think that will work as well. And I think it does. Okay, now again, let's get back into tagging our content and understand what tags mean. And we're going to do that in the next video.